Hello guys, this is Insomniac Andrew bringing you a Slark Dota 2 game. And so, for this game I ended up going solo middle. And uh, I was on the Radiant team. I first picked Slark, giving my opponents plenty of time to counterpick me if they so choose. Now, after at this point, I've kind of broken in the Dota 2 Slark a bit. So I kind of pretty much knew what I was getting myself into. And the fact that, like, I know that he's got some serious bugs that need to be fixed, and they still haven't fixed them yet. But, you know, it's it's really hard to resist temptation to play my favorite hero. Um, even though he's not really what he should be. He's not yet. But, um, I'm sure they're gonna fix that stuff eventually. Um, it's a bit of a lazy programming, I guess, for the time being. But anyhow, um, you guys will get to see how decent Solark player plays by watching this video. And uh, maybe I'll talk a bit about the bugs too. Um, maybe you could, but for the most part, you could see like kind of the, like the, what you're supposed to be doing, and that should help. So the main thing is, uh, don't necessarily pick your ability right away. And that's true for lots of heroes. Now I'm up against Templar Assassin. She's a pretty decent solo middle hero. But you'll see how I end up dealing with her. So I check for the rune. I kind of guard it. If anyone shows up, I'd pick up Essence Shift and bug them. But that didn't happen. So let me control it. Like, I don't want to get Essence shifted to death, so... Anyhow, I'm like, okay, well... Nobody's coming to the lane. Now what's up? Apparently... She's... Either not... Totally on her game... Or she was just doing the same thing I was doing. Trying to figure out which hero was in the middle. Now at this point... I attacked her four times, but she had refraction up. So I was actually still able to steal some agility. But it doesn't last very long and fades away pretty quickly at level one. So in this kind of a matchup, you do want to max up your shift when you can. Because even though she's using her refraction to make it so she doesn't take any damage, you're still feeding on her attributes. She, she lost 4 strength, 4 agility, and 4 intelligence. Granted, it only lasted 15 seconds when I had backed off. But, I mean, just level it up once and it'll last double the duration. Level it up again, it'll last even longer. Double the duration of that should be 60 seconds, then up to the max level, it'll last full two minutes. So when I pounce her so I can continue to deal damage to her, but then she hides. And that kind of throws me for a loop. I'm like, okay, well, not that big of a deal. I'll just keep her away from the lane. I feel like she faltered at this point. Like, she probably shouldn't have dived me. That was pretty aggressive of her. Like, I feel like she's afraid of my hero. Like, my hero, like I'm afraid of her hero, actually. So sometimes when you're afraid of the enemy hero, instead of trying to compete over last hits with them, you try to kill their hero. Would normally be the appropriate response. Because, you know, if you figure if they're controlling the, the movement of the creeps, by like taking all the last hits and denies, and you gotta make them pay by killing them somehow, right? So that was pretty much my goal and her goal at the same time. Which is kind of interesting. Usually, um, like if she'd been a bit more dominant, then I would have had more troubles. But she kept trying to kill me, which is kind of foolish because if you look at Slark and his ability, what he's able to do. Is he's able to escape. That's his role, I mean. His official role. 
that's it. It's melee and escape. He doesn't have carry, he doesn't have nuker, he doesn't have durable, none of that. It's just melee and escape. So it was kind of foolish of her to actually try to kill my hero, actually. So, so at this point I am maxing out my essence shift, leveling up as much as possible rather than Dark Pact. Even though Dark Pact is a very good skill. At least so far I've got two levels of that and only one of that. We'll see what else I do. As for items, I got the Ring of Regen. See, early game, you really do need that in order to maximize your shift. If you're not going to max out your essence shift, maybe Ring of Regen is not that big of a deal. But I was doing that, and I, and I was solo middle. I would probably recommend Ring of Regen every time you're solo middle. Because you're just going to have to deal with a lot of punishment from the opponent. And if you don't have that, you won't be able to deal with it before you get to level 6. Because Tango's is not enough. She was actually giving me kind of an easy time because, like I said, she was actually trying to kill me when she shouldn't have been. She could have just been harassing me. So I only ended up using so many tangos, but uh, nevertheless, I, I normally would have been in a much tighter situation. And it might be a little deceiving how low my health would go because Stark has higher base health than other heroes normally would. Or her hero is actually kind of beefy herself, so... But Slark is just a little bit beefier. And every little bit helps. And close only counts when it comes to horseshoes and hand grenades. And if somebody is close to killing you, that's not good enough. They gotta finish you off. If you're regenerating your health back up and you're still to be able to be aggressive, that's what you want. That's why... Now look at this, I'm level 6. I decided to do something drastic. I wanted to kill her bad. So I skipped my ultimate. I don't normally do that, but sometimes you should go ahead and do that. But I needed her out of the lane. Now I already had my ring of regen. I don't normally do this. It's really rare that I would do something this crazy. But it worked. Sort of. <laughs> now I ch chased her out, but then she chased me back out, so it was kind of back and forth. First blood, and it's already I almost had that ring of regeneration, so I will admit, I definitely did something wrong here. But, uh... <laughs> you know, it's 0-2... And the game's definitely not over yet. She she wasn't really in range for the gold. I don't think she got experience for that either. It was just Ogre Magi. It was basically my allies not telling me what was going on. Not, not really a big deal. But, uh, you know, that kind of thing happens in public games. So what happens next? So she's got her bottle. She's got regeneration in it. And what do we got going on at bottom and everywhere else? Tower, Crystal Maiden made a kill on someone. Where is she? She's over here. Ooh, she's not even attacking that guy with Slardar. What's up with that? Is she a kill stealer? Hmm, I think so. But anyways, yeah, I don't like kill stealing crystal maidens. So Templar went to go ganking. She's got 16 3 last hits and denies. I got 8 3 last hits and denies. So not only did Ogre Magi kill me for her. But she was dominating me in last hits. She could have stayed middle and continued to dominate me and farm up her dagger. But what did she do? She went ganking. I made sure she paid for that by taking out this creep wave the best way I knew how. 
in order to let my seed unit and take down the next creep wave pound on that tower of course now I get attacked by two people from out of nowhere but I got my ultimate, I'm cool I'm, I'm fine boosts my movement speed I've already got my boots, I'm, I'm good look at that, I brought the tower down from full to no health and look the way my tower is doing. So although I died, I was still able to really intimidate Templar quite a bit. Even if I didn't really do all that well, I got her out of the lane. Now look at our last hits. She's 19 and I'm up to 16. Before she was like 16 and I was 8. So I'm really catching up to her. I didn't really need to make any denies either, because she wasn't even in the lane. Here's where it gets interesting. Now I got level 4 Dark Pact. Now her refraction does block some of that Dark Pact damage. But it won't block all of it. Not if you've already been attacking her anyway. She tries hiding from you. Now I was kind of tripped out here. I was like, huh, what's going on with my ultimate? This is one thing that's annoying me, is that his ultimate does have some bugs, but I did figure out what they are. But during this game, I did not quite know what, the, what it was. I didn't know why it was, the buff was disappearing, and I wasn't sure if I still had my ultimate buff on or not. Because there's a bug where it disappears even though you have it. But this was not that bug. This was just her traps revealing me. So anyways, as you can see, I'm once again chasing her out with the lane with the dark pact. So now she's hugging her tower, right? At least she was for a moment. So definitely maxing out that dark pack helps out a lot. You can push back the wave in order to hurt the tower. Helps you pick up last hits. And without that, I'd, I'd still be way behind on last hits. There come two more guys I get ganked again and die. So it's zero four. So I mean, once again, you know, a lack of, lack of teamwork. This ogre magi is just ganking me to death. He's two zero zero. So he's the one making kills on me, not really anybody else. The funny thing of it is, it's not even like he's got max fire blast. He's got, he's got three levels of bloodlust, and he's level seven, which is funny. I'm not saying that any one particular strategy is more than effective than another, but this is not really your typical Ogre Magi build, that's for sure. Now, I would suspect if he's going to have Bloodlust leveled up, why doesn't he have Power Treads? Like, that's a good combination with Bloodlust. But, uh, eh. Whatever. So... Now Magnus really helps me out here with his shockwave, and then he even uses his ultimate, and then I'm able to finish her off. So she gets a taste of her own medicine, she gets ganked herself. Well it was probably a less subtle gank than the Ogre Magi ganks. It was Still a gank, I suppose, in the end. <sighs> anyway, um. So at this point, as you might be able to guess, I'm actually building a Vladimir's offering. It's a pretty good item, particularly on Slark. Now, there's a bug when you, uh, you pounce them, 
they can walk out of range of your dark pact. I don't know if that's dark pact range, unintentional radius problem, or if it's a radius problem with the leash of the pounce. But I'm guessing it's the leash of the pounce problem. Anyway, if you're at the center of where you pounce them, the range math dictates that they will absolutely get hit by your dark pact. But instead I have to keep walking into range for dark, for further into range of the hero for dark pact to hit them, which isn't right. Now, besides the fact that the numbers aren't matching up, these radius 325 and radius for dark pack 325, there's some kind of bug where that's not matching up. It, the bugs don't stop there. When you, uh, when you pounce him, he won't automatically start attacking. You have to actually right click it yourself, the hero. Now, I know for sure that's a bug because in Warcraft 3 Dota, Slark always attacked the leashed target. Always. He never attacked a different target. And back before, when he would sometimes accidentally, like, pounce creeps and stuff, I would be very much aware of that. Because I'd be like, God, I don't want to attack the pounced creep. I want to attack the, the hero instead, right? <laughs> so I would right-click the hero. But eventually they changed that, so that way you could, uh... You can't pounce creeps anymore. And that was kind of, that was pretty much basically a buff. Because... You know, it doesn't do all that much damage to creeps. And it's not AoE or anything. So... The fact that you're able to pounce, the, just to kind of jump over creeps and ignore them and, and unleash a hero, it's pretty powerful. It's better than how it used to be anyway. So, uh... But, uh, you know, I noticed right away, you no, know, he's always going to attack the one that he pounces. Like, even with the change that happened. But that isn't happening in Dota 2. Like, he's not attacking at all. I know if you take off auto attack that it's going to change something here or there. But in Warcraft 3 Dota, it had to have been triggered that he attacked the guy he pounced. Because after he pounces, he, he never attacks anything else. It's always, always, always the, the guy he pounces. Back when it, he was pouncing creeps and, and now when he's packed pouncing heroes it's still the same but he's he's not attacking anything he just he just jumps and then he just stops as if he's stunned it's really dumb so they need to fix that bug and there's also some kind of radius problem too between the interaction with dark pact and pounce something's not adding up now so if they do actually pounce you I mean if they stun you as soon as you've pounced somebody, you know, before you start right-clicking them, then they'll totally be able to walk out to the distance and not get hit by your dark pact. But the main problem that most people notice is people can actually walk out of the leash range altogether and just run back to base, which is kind of dumb. Well, it usually happens if, like, they have a haste room or a weaver, a shukuchi. Like, if you go to maximum move speed, you're able to get out of that. That's definitely not appropriate. So basically, what you need to do in Dota 2 is you need to make sure that you you move move closer in after you've pounced. Because your hero will not be automatically attacking. And don't level up your pounce either. Because you cannot rely on it properly 
There's not much point in lowering the cooldown if it's not that good of a skill to begin with. You need to max out your dark pack, and you need to max out your essence shift. Because they're considerably more reliable than pounds. Now, as you notice this game, I wasn't doing all that good. I ended up dying. I was like 0 2 0. But I've picked up the pace since then, and I'm basically 2 1 4 from that point onward. Total of 3 4. Three, two, three, four. So, although Centaur is doing awesome for our team, 2 0 2. It's not the sole reason our team is doing good. I was definitely picking up the slack. And the score is just about even. At this point, I got a power chess and Vladimir's offering. And the Vladimir's really helps our team's DPS. Now, I don't think I really did all that good this game. But I don't think anybody can with this Bugs Sark has right now. I mean, I normally pretty big fan of maxing out pounds. Not that I'm saying that you should always do it in Warcraft your Dota. There's still a hell of a lot more viable than it is in Dota 2. So I mean, as you can see, I'm trying to focus on taking out Templar, because I know even through your fraction, I'm still able to get some agility. Look, I've stolen 42 agility. And with that, I was able to pick up a couple more kills and complete an ultra kill, and I would have gotten a rampage. But Darkseer decided to take the last kill, which is fine. You should keep in mind that maxing out that essence shift is pretty useful. So even though. You know, Pounce, it's kind of sad that it's been nerfed the way it has with all the crazy bugs that haven't been fixed. He's still got three other really, really useful abilities. Now, if I was going up against a uh, Weaver, oh, I'd be crying. <laughs> He's just practically invulnerable to that Pounce, it's not fair. The Templar Assassin is not a Weaver. In Warcraft 3 Dota, Weaver was no biggie. He was just like another Templar Assassin to me. And you just pounce him, and he gets stuck, and he gets hit by Dark Pact, just like she does. Like, even if she had Blink Dagger, she wouldn't be able to blink away without me Dark Pacting her. But Magnus was going to get help, too. He would jump in there, throw Shockwave at her, too, with an Ultimator. Our team was working together. What was their team doing? It didn't seem like they were working together. I think they were blaming Templar Assassin. Doing badly against Lark. Look at her, she's 0 4. But she wasn't doing all that bad in the lane. Over Magi went ahead and picked up the kills when I was really low. Do you know how I picked up the kills? He was maxing on bloodlust first, that's how I picked up the kills. He was attacking fast, oh yeah. yeah that's how you kill steal, right? Kill steal style Ricky. He buys power treads. Make sure <laughs> Dude, power tread Ricky's so bad. Tranquil boots is better. Now I'm not saying that bloodlust is bad on over Magi. But if you're doing it to kill steal, that's not so good. Like I remember seeing a lich with a Yasha of all items. He had a Yasha and he was like getting tons of kills on our team. But he ended up losing the team for a game because that's what he was he was doing. He was getting the attack speed stuff. Like I can't, can't remember, maybe he bought a mask of madness, I'm not sure. Probably not. But <laughs> just imagine if he had. How foolish it would have been. 
I managed to save Magnus from dying there, and that's what you call teamwork right there. He almost died. It would have been so easy for me to just let him die. But I went ahead and made the effort to save him, and it paid off. Like, okay, I have no mana, practically. But it only cost 40 mana to cast that sucker. And I was able to save him. By casting it. I mean, with Vladimir's offering, it keeps you on top of your mana. But not just that, it helps your allies a little bit too with their mana. I mean, it's not exactly arcane boots, but you don't want to build arcane boots. Probably only hurt like Slark anyway. I'm sure you're going to need more mana than Vladimir's going to offer you, but early game, it definitely helps. What I like to do to clinch solving the mana problems is get a bloodstone. Like, look at this. Right now, he's plus 450 health because he's got a soul booster. You may laugh at it, but I've got 836 right now, and I had an ultra kill. Do I go on to lose the game? Well, you can keep watching to find out. The point is, um, Slark's making those kills with his mana. He's using his ultimate to keep stealing attributes of acid shift. He's using pounce to keep trapping people. And Dark Pack puts out lots of magical damage. All that stuff requires banner. A soul booster by itself only gives 100% mana regeneration. It's only as much as a single void stone. But once you add on another void stone, that's 100% mana regeneration. But at this point, I was more interested in getting a ring of health. <sighs> because I was interested in preserving my uh, killing streak, and really, 100% is still pretty darn good. I mean, look at this. It's like 200 and... It's looking pretty good. It's not spectacular, but it's good enough. Well, here's the interesting thing about strikers. You can move around pretty fast. Look at his movement. It's, um... Uh, Well, it's 360, that's not right, is it? It's supposed to be more than that. Do I find another bug, damn it? I think I did. Well, norm yeah, there we go, 504. See, I was over here, there's no way they had vision of me over here. I was over here. Finally, I get over here so they could see me and then I briefly got out of sight like over here or so and my movement went back up to 500 what's up with that all this whole time my movement could have been 500 but there appears to be some bugs with the ultimate it's kinda of hard to determine what they are without actually being able to look at the code and it was always encrypted in Warcraft 3 Dota, so although I was very familiar with how his abilities worked, and he was never buggy, he was never buggy in Warcraft 3 Dota. Um, I don't really have a frame of reference to compare it to, other than my experience with just playing him. But anyways, um... So, I mean, there's at least two bugs with his ultimate. Maybe it's just the one, I don't know. One and the same. But I've noticed, like, you're at the creep camp. So, it's supposed to be P 
you haven't been taking damage from creeps after two seconds and you're still not seen by enemies, then you'll get your movement speed boost. But sometimes you don't get it. Or what's more likely will happen what I've what I've seen to be the case, and I could be wrong about this, is you you just won't get your buff return. But you still get either your movement speed or your health regen or both. Or you just won't see it. And you'll be confused about whether or not you actually have the buff. But I don't know, it's pretty confusing sometimes because it's hard to know whether the awards are up when you're actually watching the game compared to if you're watching the replay. As you can see, now I got my bloodstone, I'm not really running out of mana. And I can chase her all over the map to finish her off. So I make sure I have plenty of mana. And I got decent health regen too, even if I'm seen. Between Vlad's and the bloodstone. Here we got magic wand charges. And once I'm unseen, bam! Right up to full health. So it's not a bad item. Some people would make it out to be. I even like it on a hero like Phantom Lancer. It's pretty good. Phantom Lancer's mana costs are pretty outrageous too. He's got like a spell that costs 140 and it's really short cooldown. So I mean, come on, seriously. Get real, people. Like, people need to realize that Heart is not as good as Bloodstone on Phantom Lancer. We're just rolling over these people. We're just. It was like five seven, like six seven, all the way up to twenty five seven, like twenty twenty kill streak for a team or so, something like that. It was like 0 4 at one point in their favor. But I think it was 0 7 or something. I don't know. It was crazy. The numbers are mad. But now, now look at the numbers. But if you're a pretty new hero, a lot of people might not be aware that, you know, Bloodseeker is a great hero against Slark. Um, Rubik is pretty darn good against him. Like, he really messes up Slark's Dark Pact. Like, you'll pick Slark up and push him away from him so that he doesn't get damaged. Templar Assassin, not so good. Like, early on, she's not bad, but, you know, once he gets his essence shift maxed out, she's, oh, she's in trouble. Because she's just going to feed him agility with her shield. Her shield works against her. An overly defensive hero like that, that'll happen to him. Lord of Avernus is coming to Dota 2, he also has a shield. And he's also kind of weak against Slark. Like, he's got two shields. A Slark isn't really all that tough. But when you've been stealing 42 agility or so, it's plus 42 damage right there. Plus, um... Your extra damage will make any life steal you have more effective. It also makes damage bonus percentage stuff more effective too. So if you could get like Vengeful Spirit on your team, that would be awesome. Because she's got that. But you don't even need a Vengeful Spirit either. There's a weaker Vengeful Spirit Vengeful Aura and Vladimir Zara. Sure, it's not as good as actually having Vengeful on your team, but it's the next best thing. So 
people really underestimate Vladimir's opening on Slark. Now at this point it probably didn't really matter what item I bought. We had the game one. I decided to go for Radiance because I think it works nicely against hiding heroes. Like, I already had dark packs, but I guess I figured that wasn't enough. So as you can see, Crystal Maiden get, and Slaughter get me into quite the pickle. <laughs> and I desperately pounce to get away. But of course I can't quite get out of the base. But it doesn't matter because my allies rush to my rescue, which is great. So although you weren't really calling their allies missing early on, she pulled through for me in the end, and I could totally be grateful for that. And really, every hero in Dota sh requires this. They require teamwork. I don't care who you're playing, if it's Faceless Void or Slark, you're going to need teamwork. Because it's a team game. Just keep that in mind. Tiplar, unfortunately, she was 0x whatever. Her allies looked down on her and didn't show the teamwork they should have. So I mean this isn't really a game where I'm trying to show off my skill because how can I show off my skill when I'm dealing with Slark bugs? But I can show you how to deal with Slark in his current Dota 2 situation. You can kind of play like this a bit. And I can also show you, of course, the importance of teamwork. That's nice, too. Yeah, I could show you a few pointers about decent items. These are all pretty good items. Although, I can go ahead and show you bonus. I'll show you what I like for item suggestions for Slark. I say these are all pretty good starting items. Maybe pick from some of these consumables too, of course. Feel free. I like, I like tangos. Some people might like healing self. I'll get that occasionally. But mostly I don't really plan on getting it. Like if I'm here, and I plan to intercept the creep wave with axe, sure. Healing self is great. Um, Otherwise, not so good. Starship would also be really good. Celsius is generally a good item, so is Ring. These items are pretty all good. Even this one's not bad. Especially if you're trying to get a Vladimir's offering. But anyway. This stuff. This makes lots of good stuff. This makes your Basher, it makes your Treads. It'll make Necromicon, which you probably don't really need to get. But it'll make a Sange, which is great. Um... And of course, uh, Javelin makes that, and it makes this too, which you need two of. So I put these up there, um, just because it's it's an easier link. You just click on it to get your items. The main thing you want to get, your main core, is your power treads. After that, pretty much anything goes. Um, you might want a, a Yasha, which you can get through... It'll lead you up to Manta style eventually, so I got Manta there for her situational. Or maybe instead of a Yasha, you like a Mask of Madness. That's another pretty good item. Like if you're going up against Anti Mage, you can keep Anti Mage down um, with that. You really are going to need the Basher eventually, but you know, until you get your Basher, 
but it can help to get some super uber attack speed for sure. But, uh, you know, normally Yasha is a much safer item to get. And then there's, uh, other interesting items. Like you get the Maelstrom, which you can link to with the gloves. You can shoot for an armlet or hand of Midas. Not entirely bad options. Um, so, I mean, they're all linked together with the Gloves of Haste. But normally, I tend to like to get the Bloodstone and the Vlads. It's my favorites. But, uh... Yeah, now the replay's over. And I can't see the items anymore. But as you can see, um... Pretty fun hero. Um, if you get to know him and play him, pretty good. Like Radiance, I got it because of their invisible hero. And, uh. The other items are pretty good. Like, if I was worried about Windrunner, I would get the Monkey King bar, which is what Javelins turn into, as well as the Demon Edge. I get that too. Um. I wasn't really worried about her. I wasn't really worried about Templar either, but whatever. Um, just buying it because I could, mostly. Could have bought anything. It didn't really matter at that point. And then, uh... The other items are not visible, but Vitality Booster was one of them. And that can, of course, turn into Bloodstone. It can turn into Heart Tarask. Can also turn into a uh, Vanguard. Heart Task and Vanguard are still pretty viable options, even though I prefer the Bloodstone. But uh, I did went ahead and put the Vitality Booster on the list along with Gloves of Haste. So uh, I think it's a pretty good list. And uh, maybe you guys could take some pointers from it. Let's see if I can access that list again. I'll just watch a, any old game and uh, we'll load the list back up again so we can talk about it a little bit more. Got interrupted. Uh, I know it's a pretty long video already, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I finish what I was talking about. So, um, darn, I have to wait for these guys to pick their heroes. Well, we're we're doing pretty good. We got Slark picked. So we are going to do another video, I think. Let's stop this here and start up again.